Next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Okay. Um, let's talk about some foreign policy uh, issues that would be on your plate if you become commander in chief. Uh, President Biden has tried unsuccessfully uh, to end the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. He's been doing it for months and months along with you. Would you do anything differently? For example, would you withhold some U.S. weapons shipments to Israel? That's what a lot of people on the progressive left want you to do. Uh, let me be very clear. I am unequivocal and, and unwavering in my commitment to Israel's defense and its ability to defend itself. And that's not going to change. But let's take a step back. October 7, 1,200 people were massacred. Many young people who were simply attending a music festival. Women were horribly... As I said then, I say today, Israel had a right, has a right to defend itself, we would. And how it does so matters. Far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. And we have got to get a deal done. We, we were in Doha. Mm -hmm. We have to get a deal done. This war must end. In the meantime. And we must get a deal that is about getting the hostages out I've met with the families of the American hostages. Let's get the hostages out. Let's get the ceasefire done. But no change in policy in terms of arms and, and so forth. No, I, we have to get a deal done. Dan, Dana, we have to get a deal done. When you look at the significance of this to the families, to the people who are living in that region, um, it, a deal is not only the right thing to do to end this war, but will unlock so much of what must happen next. I remain committed since I've been on October 8 to what we must do to work toward a two-state solution, where Israel is secure and in equal measure, the Palestinians have security and self-determination and, and dignity. Yesterday, Vice President Harris did her, I believe, first interview since her campaign started with Dana Bash of CNN. It was a joint interview with her vice presidential running mate, Tim Walsh, and I have quite a bit to say about it. I played that clip at the beginning of this because it's the most important clip of the interview, in my opinion. For, before we even start, CNN showed how greedy they were because they put this interview up, and it's not a long interview, it's half an hour. They put this interview up in three parts so each every like eight to ten minutes you're having to keep click on a different video and really what it's about is them trying to generate more views and money for their channel you know just the greediness of this uh, corporation that I'm sure already makes enough money from airing this on TV but that that's the that's not an issue with Harris or Walsh that's just CNN stupidity which they show a lot of. One of the things that I was really hoping for with this interview, and I think a lot of people who you know are nominally on Harris's side were hoping for, was that she would be, give some specifics of what she wants to do. She's talked about creating an opportunity economy, and she'll mention a child, ta a child tax credit and uh, twenty five thousand dollars for you know first time people attempting to put a money down on, on buying a house, you know, little pieces here and there. But Harris has this problem, and it's something that Obama had back in 2008, but people weren't as familiar with it, but now we see it more clearly, where a lot of these politicians will talk about something in kind of a general way as an issue, but not really give a specific on Like Harris mentions, the environment is bad, and we need to have environmental jobs like okay are you are you going to support the green new deal which you have not talked about as far as i can tell since you last ran for president in 2020 if not even earlier than that just very few specifics given and i i'm i'm really disappointed because i thought with waltz being there they would ask hey do you agree with harris's positions do you have your own ideas do you contribute to the campaign you know just give us like a bigger idea of him as a person because he is someone who if she's elected will be a heartbeat away from ultimate power. And I didn't walk away from this interview feeling I knew him any better. I mean, they, they talked to him about his son's viral moment of 
you know, being proud of him during the, you know, DNC, which is, you know, whatever, but it, it's irrelevant to what his actual positions are as a politician and as someone who could potentially be the number two to, to Harris if she becomes president. Now, when we get to the subject of Gaza, because that's what that was why I picked that clip. That's the most important few minutes of this interview. Harris is constantly caught between a rock and a hard place because you have this group of young Democrat, young left leaning voters who are like, listen, I'm not supporting candidates who are fine with genocide. That's just not something I'm okay with. And they're making it very apparent that, you know, this is a thing that they're not going to get over. It's not some minor issue you can ignore. There's a reason why in this interview with Bash, as far as I can tell, and I tried to, I, I watched the section with Harris answering about, about Gaza twice. I don't think she gets asked any other foreign policy questions throughout that whole half hour. Like nothing about North Korea, nothing about Russia, Ukraine, you know, just... Gaza, that's it. And that's asked after Harris has asked a question about Trump's comments about her, you know, whatever. But what's interesting is like they know this is an important question, one of the most defining issues of this campaign cycle. And Harris wants to kind of play this middleman thing. You know, I support Israel's right to exist and um, they have, you know, the right to defend themselves. And, 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 and women were being horribly blank. And I'm like, you know, by the way, if, if they're being horribly, you know, whatever, uh, it, they would just, it, it's kind of like if I said someone devastatingly punched me, it's like, well, if they punch me, it's going to hurt one way or the other. You're going to have to like add this extra word on top of just, just, you know, the, like word salad, nebulous crap. But she also tries to say, oh, the Palestinians need to have their dignity recognized and we need a two-state solution. And it's like, lady, listen, if you are serious about having a two-state solution, if you're serious about getting Israel to recognize the sovereignty, the humanity of Palestinians, you're only going to be able to affect them when it comes to their pockets. That's the only thing that, 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 that horrific government wants to be able to to get from the U.S., not your opinion, not your empty rhetoric. And if you continue down this path, you're going to lose votes from people who, to them, this is the most important issue. And what's so irritating about this, right, is that people see through it. Um, but also, and I've, I've made a comment like this before. The thing about politicians, about these supposed elected leaders, is that they're supposed to be leaders. They're supposed to be individuals who can take a stance on an issue. And, and whether it's something that they think most people agree with or that they know most people don't agree with, they stand by it. They're, they don't back down from it. And I, I think Harris would get more respect if she just came out and said, listen, uh, either I support Israel entirely, there will be no policy change from Biden, which is what she says sort of halfway in this interview while still trying to like keep the door open or I'm going to make sure that Israel doesn't get one cent of American money while it continues to devastate the lives of Palestinians. See, if she, if she took one affirmative stance or the other, she would be seen as a much more courageous person who, whether you agreed with her or not, was demonstrating some confidence which is typically a trait associated with leaders but she doesn't do that she's too scared and afraid of like she's scared of APAC and that's why she doesn't want to like completely you know turn and like do anything assertive with Israel right that's after she skipped Netanyahu's speech she went right back to just never criticizing Israel at all but then there's the other part of her that's like afraid of the, the Palestinian supporters you know who are like oh well I guess I have to say that they're they need something she, she did not do herself any favor with this interview. I don't think there was a single question asked that actually revealed anything that a, that a voter would be excited for. A lot of it was just platitudes and irrelevant stuff like, ooh, there's this picture of your uh, great niece looking at you while you gave your speech. Ooh, uh, oh, where were, what was your reaction when Biden told you that he was dropping out? It's like, again, who, what person? Who's living paycheck to paycheck, who can't afford a thousand dollar emergency, which is most Americans, cares about the rest of this stuff. 
at least with Gaza, if you answer in a certain way, you can excite people to like you know to want to vote for you. The rest of this is just mindless nonsense, and it's it's such a letdown because you really would think if they're going to sit down for half an hour, they're going to be grilling her about some major issues. You know, truthfully, if the media was worth a damn, and if we actually had like a real attempt at journalism, they would have Harris being interviewed. They would have Harris and Trump being interviewed for at least probably an hour every week from now until November, which is not that far away to be, you know, we're only only two full months left until this election. Um, if they were really trying to get to the bottom of what makes her tick and what her positions are. But the way that the media is, you can just say nebulous nonsense that doesn't mean anything or that we have no reason to believe will actually happen. And you get a pat on the back. Oh, I, I support a two-state solution, even though I will do absolutely nothing different to ensure that this occurs. Yay! So, like I said, this this was 30 minutes of a waste of time. I feel bad for having even watched it. And if Harris gets interviewed again, depending on who it's with, I might not even bother. Um, I'll just wait until she has her first debate with Trump. If, if neither of them decides to pull out of that, if I want to see her give any more public remarks. This was... This was 30 minutes of people's lives being wasted with nonsense and, and stuff that doesn't matter whatsoever. And the only the only portion of it that was worth listening to was that two minutes I stuck at the start of this video. You're welcome.